All right, it's November 16th, 2024. We've got a weather update for you, starting off with Tropical Storm Sarah. It doesn't look very intense right now, does it? Well, that's because it's not. There's not a lot going on down here. It's not strengthening. It's it's probably not going to reach hurricane intensity, but it is bringing about some flash flooding, some pretty significant impacts to our folks down here in Central America, especially in Honduras and uh, eventually over there towards Belize. Thankfully, this one is really not causing many headlines. It's not causing many headaches. And the threat for our friends up here uh, along the Gulf Coast of Florida also continues to decrease. Here's the latest cone from the National Hurricane Center. You can see it's a tropical storm right now, but as soon as Sunday, it'll be a depression over portions of Mexico here. It is still going to make it back out over into the Gulf of Mexico. And the Gulf of Mexico is still warm enough to support a hurricane. In fact, it's warm enough to support a strengthening hurricane. However, we don't think that that's going to happen, mainly because because of a significant amount of wind shear that is present over the Gulf of Mexico. Remember, hurricanes are big scary storms, but they're little babies whenever it comes to this wind shear thing. It's like the kryptonite of hurricanes. They can't deal with any of it. Uh, even the smallest amount will uh, a lot of times tear apart uh, a developing hurricane. So I think that what's going to happen here is the storm's going to get out over the Gulf of Mexico. And don't get me wrong, it's going to try to pick up strength. It's going to try to pick up intensity. That energy over the Gulf of Mexico is going to be available to the storm, but it's going to get caught up in a big trough here, and it is going to eventually just become part of that, and it's not going to be a system of its own. It's just going to kind of add moisture and energy into another system that will be impacting a lot of the U.S., but uh, not necessarily in the form of a hurricane or a tropical system here. So thankfully, I think that the impacts from Sarah here in the U.S. are going to be minimal. However, anytime we have tropical cyclone uh, tracks that look like this where they're pointing towards the U.S. We've got to pay attention to it because things can change, of course, and uh, that's what we'll be keeping an eye on as we go forward. Let's take a look at Sarah here on the GFS. As I push this into the future, you can see it really falls apart, especially after it starts making more uh, contact with land. That's another kryptonite for tropical systems. They don't like being over land very long, and this one's going to take the farthest possible track across, you know, the Yucatan Peninsula that it could possibly make, so it's going to have plenty of time to continue to fall apart. And then looky here, we We've got a big trough coming down into Mexico in the Four Corners region of the United States. It's going to eject up over Texas into the central U.S. and it's going to pick up the energy from that cyclone and really stretch it out and not allow it to take advantage of that Gulf of Mexico uh, heat like we were just talking about. It's instead going to add uh, some moisture and some energy into the overall rainfall you know, system that's going to be happening here across the eastern U.S. and it's not really going to be that much of a big deal, I don't think. Think. Things could change, but that's the trajectory right now. Really, the big story here is going to be the trough, okay? This right here is going to be a much bigger deal for most of us than the tropical storm, so that's what we're going to talk about right now. Sunday, November 17th. This is tomorrow. It's a slight risk of severe weather thanks to that trough. We're going to have lots of cold air coming in inside of the trough, meeting up with that warm gulf moisture right here in the middle. We're going to have big-time storms forming uh, in the afternoon and evening around uh, Fort Stockton and Midland, moving Moving east up towards Abilene and Wichita Falls and Fort Worth. And then as we go into uh, the day on Monday, that's going to continue to move east and probably be a pretty dangerous squall line from about Oklahoma City down to Dallas uh, Monday morning. And then the threat will move on east into Arkansas and Louisiana, but it's likely not going to be um, as strong uh, in, in that portion of the storm as it is back here. So here's what the radar could look like as we go farther and farther into the future. You can see things are really quiet right now and they're going to continue to be quiet. Precipitation is going to pick up over here in the Pacific Northwest. We have a ton of winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories right now, especially for areas above 2,500 and uh, 4,000 feet as this is going to bring about 5 to 15 inches of snow for various uh, places uh, in the Cascades and the Intermountain West and also probably a significant amount of rain along the coasts of uh, Oregon and Washington. But uh, you can see where the energy really starts to pick up here on Sunday around 4 p.m. We start to see precipitation precipitation breaking out in New Mexico, Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. It's likely not going to be severe at this point, but probably in the late evening, things are going to start getting a little bit more interesting, especially with the storms that form down here between Midland and Odessa, as they're going to be picking up on a lot of that wind shear. And I, I think that when these storms first start uh, forming, they're going to have a really good chance of uh, producing some tornadoes. Not a really good chance, but a better chance than the rest of the, the progression of the storm, I guess. So there's 
a little bit of a tornado risk down here when these storms first get going. But then I think the main thing is almost certainly going to be winds. By the time the storms get to Wichita Falls at 4 a.m. on Monday, I think that damaging winds are going to be the biggest uh, problem that we have. At the same time, we're going to have intermittent blizzard conditions, especially in the higher elevations back here in New Mexico. Uh, we're going to have more snow coming into Idaho and Montana as well. And then uh, storms are eventually going to make it into the Oklahoma City and Dallas, Fort Worth regions probably later in the day on Monday. This is 7 a.m. Uh, I would say anywhere from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. is when those storms will make it to, you know, Oklahoma and, and Dallas along the I-35 corridor there. And I think that the main threat's going to be wind. That could change as we get more, you know, high resolution data. And as we get closer, uh, we'll let you know if anything changes there. But this is definitely looking like a wind event to me. Moving farther into the future, this is going to affect, you know, more than just uh, Oklahoma City and Dallas, right? As we go into Monday, the rain's going to kick up up here in uh, Iowa, Nebraska, up into Minneapolis. There's going to be a line of showers and some embedded thunderstorms that goes all the way down the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, we're going to have more snow uh, moving into the Pacific Northwest as well, especially as we go into Wednesday. A much bigger system's going to be moving in over here. Some more thunderstorm activity is going to be possible in the southeast during this time. But look at this, big time cold air trying to punch in into the central United States. It's going to get much colder than it's been uh, in Kansas City, in Denver, maybe even all the way down there towards Oklahoma City and St. Louis. As we go into Wednesday and Thursday, there's going to be chances of snow in Minneapolis. And look at this, there's going to be chances of snow in Cleveland. Yeah, now it's starting to sound like November, right? It's starting to sound like November. We've got this big trough, this big lobe of cold air that's going to be kind of catching itself up against the Appalachian Mountains here and bringing a real shot of snow to the Ohio Valley. Look at this, Thursday, November 21st, we might have intermittent heavy snow showers in Southern Ohio, Eastern Kentucky, and West Virginia. And this has me super excited. I love snow. And this is this is where I live. If you didn't know, you know, I'm dusting off my yala meter right now. However, you know, I, I, it's too soon to do a, a you know, a, a snowfall forecast right now. But this looks like a higher elevation kind of thing right now for the most part. I think that we're going to have uh, intermittent periods of heavy snowfall uh, over here uh, next week. But a lot of that's going to melt on impact, especially in the valleys and especially up there where we don't even have mountains up there towards Columbus, Ohio. But there will be a couple places that get some snow out of this, I think, especially up there uh, above 2,000 feet. And this is the next thing that I'm going to be paying attention to because this could actually turn into a, a pretty big storm system. You know, this is like a, a signal for something that could eventually impact the Northeast or maybe even just more of the Appalachian Mountains as this is a uh, very large and uh, impressive storm system. The uh, waters out here in the Atlantic are still very warm. So this just has my eye. So I'm watching this and seeing how the uh, developments go here. But right now it just looks like a big plunge of uh, cold air into the eastern portion of the U.S. and a little bit of snow. B right behind that though is more dry air and more warmth. You can see that very well here on the GFS. We've got a big plume of warmth moving through the eastern United States, a big time uh, cold air mass back here in the west. This is what's causing our storm system. Once that gets out of here, we're going to look at our big time uh, cool down across the southern U.S. and the eastern U.S. This is what's helping th that snow in the Appalachian Mountains. It's going to feel much cooler than average in Florida next week from Wednesday all the way through Saturday. Uh, but looky here, as we go into Sunday and Monday, things start looking a little bit more like they have as we've got another big ridge forming back here in the west and it's going to lead to another heat wave essentially uh, around Thanksgiving moving through the central and eastern U.S. More dry, more abnormally warm weather expected from Chicago to Texas and then eventually up there into the interior northeast and New England as well. This will set the stage, however, for potentially another big storm whenever we make the turn from November into December. So that's really far out there in the future. It's too early to really talk about that right now. But this is the kind of pattern that we look for in the winter to uh, see potential severe weather outbreaks. So, uh, But other than that, that's pretty much it. I mean, I think the biggest thing that we've got to talk about right now is the near-term severe weather threat. So if you live out here in uh, Texas or Oklahoma, make sure you are weather aware. It doesn't look like it's going to be quite significant enough to trigger a traditional Ryan Hall y'all live stream. However, Ryan Hall y'all essentially, and, and y'all bot, uh, we're live 24-7 now. Uh, if you didn't know this, we've launched our 24-7 severe weather uh, coverage kind of YouTube channel thing over here on the Ryan Hall y'all extra channel. You can go uh, search that up or you can click a link in the description 
description. And what this is, is it's the uh, overlay that we all know and love, the one that says a new tornado warning has been issued. You know, <laughs> you guys, you've seen it before. It's that, and you have access to it now 24 seven, anytime there's a warning anywhere. It, it'll tell you within seconds of it being issued, and then the radar is gonna zoom in on that warning and, and show you what's going on there. There'll be a little blurb here that tells you about it. And also, we do have Yallbot. I don't know if we'll see Yallbot pop up here um, during this plug, but Yallbot pops up and, and relays storm reports and, and gives additional information automatically in real time. It's like watching the Weather Channel, but it's on YouTube. It's free. It'll never cost money. It's really cool. I, I've got it up on all of our TVs. It seems like a lot of you guys that have went and looked at it are, are also uh, enjoying it. And I think that this is going to be really cool during severe weather events like what, what we're going to have tomorrow and the next day where it doesn't necessarily trigger a 12 hour live stream where our whole team is on board, but like we are all going to be here monitoring this and, and everything. And it, it, it'll be kind of like the waiting room for uh, <laughs> uh, live stream. So yeah, go check that out. The Ryan Hall y'all extra channel, uh, subscribe, like uh, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I've got for you today. I appreciate you for uh, being here. I'll probably have another video tomorrow to give you some updates on that severe weather. Otherwise, have a good weekend and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.